from It's a Wrap and we're here for a book review. Um, I'm very excited about this book review. I have lots of thoughts. So today we are reviewing Candace Cardi Williams. Is this considered her sophomore novel? I'm not sure. I know she came out with the young adult novel um, but this is I guess her literary fiction follow-up um, from Queenie which was a bestseller. It was lots of conversation with around it hate it or love it I have my opinions I'm not going back I was like maybe one day I'll do a review but we're not going back we're only moving forward from here so <laughs> so um yep yeah. so she's back people person um and I have thoughts I have thoughts I'm still on the fence about it but let's get into it so um people person is um centered around the main character dimples i mean the central story is the central main like character is dimples but it's truly um centers around five siblings this is based in london so five siblings who um except for two the the oldest and the youngest um who share different mothers but are all connected by their fleeting rolling stone of a father Cyril who um was pretty much in and out mostly out of his children's lives but what um brings them together is as children Cyril decides that he wants all his children to know each other so one day he picks them up in his gold jeep and they go to the park get an ice cream and he tells them, hey, you are all related. You are all siblings. I just want you guys to know. And in that, the eldest daughter, Nikisha, um, says that we are family. And um, if we ever, if you ever need anything, just call me. And, you know, she'll come through. So decades go by and we then catch up with the middle child, Dimple. And um, Dimple has a incident that happens in her life um that is unexpected and she doesn't know who to call and the first person she thinks of is her eldest sister Nikisha who she has not talked to in years but remembers decades ago when she said if you need anything call okay as tweet said call me I'll be there in a hurry did she say that Call me, oh, when you need me, baby, you don't have to worry. Okay. We can do, we can do something. Okay. Anyway, so that's pretty much the story. And then, you know, it unfolds a bunch of other things. But um, I will say the main character, Dimple, for a summary, for the five children. So Dimple is the middle child. Dimple and then there is Lizzie. And they're only like a week apart. Um, but they both have different moms. So they're like a week apart. Um, and then there is the next oldest who's Danny. Um, they're her brother. And then the oldest, Nikisha. Um, and then she has like the, or Cyril has two kids with Nikisha's mother. So it's Nikisha and then the very youngest one, Prince, who are 10 years apart. So all the, so the five children are spread over 10 years. Um, and we don't really actually, do we learn a lot about Cyril? So we know that Cyril, um, that, uh, you know, he, meets like he's a lover boy and he lives like just this very like like fleeting life i'm the only thing i keep thinking of the song papa was a rolling stone that's what's given in my head whatever he let his head was his home okay <laughs> like so sire like he's in, he has his gold jeep and like that's pretty much everything his house is kind of like whatever like he don't really pay bills 
he's a bus driver and he loved to DJ. So he would DJ on the side, um, but mainly he was a bus driver. And he kind of like met and seduced and like not really found love. It seemed like seduced. He didn't seem like he was in a very serious relationship with any of these women, except for what it appeared to be Dimple's mom, who um, they imply that out of all the women, Cyril really did love Dimple's mom. He just has a very serious attachment issue, um, which obviously like he has no relationships with any of his children. So um, from his own childhood trauma. So yeah, we do get that by Cyril, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like we're supposed to be like, oh, Cyril is just this jolly, lovely guy. But like, I was like, Cyril's terrible. Like he's not there for his kids when he, he sees them once in a blue moon. And when he does see them, like every scene that he's in with his, even from when they were children, like Nikita paid for the ice cream. He never had money. He was always asking his ki his kids for money. And he never really watched his kids from when you hear the stories back from everyone. Every time the mothers gave the kids to him, he would just put them on somebody else and he would just go live his, his, live his life. And then there was like, oh, supposedly he has a six kid. Anyway, but um, outside of Cyril, Dimple, the main character, just in terms of like her relationship with men, and I think mainly it's her insecurity, her insecurity and her, her naiveness. The naiveness is a main thing because I felt like um, Queenie was super, was she naive? Queenie was giving me naive. It was like, girl, why would you make these decisions? Like, you you question their decision making. You're all like, you're too old and you've had too much like life experience. How can you make these decisions? Like, that's how I like how I the ugh, the audible like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's doing this. That I felt for Queenie, except she was spiraling. Um, but Dimple and Queenie are the same, I think, because one of like their naiveness. And I think they're both the same. Was Dimple, was Queenie in her late 20s? I think she was in her late 20s or early 30s. Like she was somewhere between like 25, early 30s, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And um, Dimple just turned 30. And I just felt like for 30, Dimple was giving me 21. A smooth 19. Like freshman year of college. Like, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe like senior year of college. I don't know. I just felt like Dimple, it was like a naiveness of not someone who, in terms of like her relationship, it was just, was a naiveness that was not someone of her age. And maybe that's just me. And at some point, like at some point, like Queenie got my nerves. And at some point, Dimple, Dimple got my nerves in her book. What am I talking about? Like, she was just so, like, emotionally, I want to say emotionally unhinged. Like, she had no just control over her. <laughs> I feel like she had no control over her emotions. <laughs> and it was, yeah, like, it's one thing to be in tune with your emotions, but it's another thing to, like, not have, like, a rain. Like, I feel like she didn't have a rain on her emotions, um, which was, it was kind of annoying. It was kind of annoying. Um, and again, we have to talk about like, Candace, I'm going to really be the judge. I'm going to read the third novel because, you know, one thing, Queenie, I read that in a day and people person, I think took me like three days. It took me like three days. Candace knows how to like reel you in and she really knows how to like it's it's just yeah it's good storytelling like it's really even the same with Queenie you're just like a jar and it's like like I can't believe this is happening and like it's a like she knows how to give you a good page turner and I love the humor the humor is always on point um, but it's like a dark humor. And I feel like people person is definitely more funny. Like Queenie was not funny. At some point you were just like, girl, what? Like you were just like, oh, you're just like, oh, but while things are spot, like things are spiraling in people person for a dimple, I'm not going to lie, you know, but, um, I think 
like the the humor like you had like an audible laugh like the 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 back and forth between her siblings which is also like that I think that's the biggest pro like the 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 relationship between her siblings the relationship that develops the way that they kind of like come to cope and lean on each other um in process um this this feeling of being abandoned by their dad and like this family dynamic and kind of like rethinking like their family and their relationship. Like the relationship that develops between the siblings is the best part of this novel. I loved like Danny is one of my favorite characters in the book. Just um, getting the like Danny had layers and I really enjoyed that just like you think Danny is like the super positive person and of course the most positive people are just you know it's a coping me- mechanism and you, you learn like Danny's insecurities and hurts and like he like he we find the humanity in Danny um which I really enjoyed so yes I really enjoyed Danny um Nikisha I wish we had learned a little bit more about Nikisha Nikisha is the oldest sibling and she very much feel like leads and feel like she needs to keep it together and she very like she what what you do learn what you do get from like when you do come to learn her or meet her mother in the book um you kind of get that her mother is a big personality and is very like out and about and um a hoarder um and Nikisha seems to be like the grounded person in the house and for Prince and just like in the family dysfunction period so like when people die or when things happen Nikisha like steps in or even from the very beginning like while the dad's like is all over the place she's just all like okay well sit here and do this and she seems just to be like she even at a young age she felt like she had to you know step in and be the the rhyme and the reason <laughs> in the madness so but we don't really get to know like Nikisha's story we know she has two kids and like she's not with the, the father but you know he's still like parents and she's still like has a relationship with the with the children but we don't really get to know her trials and tribulations and like why she's not working or what she wants, like her dreams and aspirations. We don't really get that. No, no, we don't. Um, Lizzie, Lizzie was not my favorite. I'm not going to lie. And it broke my heart. Well, it didn't break my heart. L- Lizzie's mom, I think she's like, yeah. So Lizzie's mom is like, the running thing is like Lizzie is Nigerian and her mom is like, like when she finds out that Cyril was not going to be a part of her life. She was just all like deuces excommunicated. Like don't, she don't want nothing to do with that man. But overall, <sighs> honestly, when I read Queenie, I gave Queenie, I think a three. I have to look back on my good reads. I think I gave it a three. But as I sat with Queenie, why I hate, like, I hated the character and, like, the, just the decisions that she made and the roller coaster that she took us on. It was a thrilling read. I still think about it and I reference it a lot. I really do. I really do reference it a lot. And there was a couple books in that, like, era, like, Such a Fun Age. I'm trying to think of other books. Such a Fun Age is the only one that's coming to my head right now, but I'm sure there's, like, there's definitely, like, two more that I can't think of right now. That kind of, like, oh, Luster. Luster was another one. Like, Queenie definitely set a tone um, that now when you read a book, you're all like, bitch, this is giving Queenie. And that's innovative, okay? Um, so I don't know if when I sit more with people person that I will grow to appreciate it more like I did with Queenie. Like, the more I sat with Queenie, the more I appreciated the book more. And we'll probably go back and rate it like a five just on like lasting impressions um for people person right now it's a three it's it was there was things i really loved about it like i said the dynamic between the family and the lessons that we got about family um and it was that's it was relatable like as a black person in the diaspora of um coming from a family of African immigrants um and also like just being within the diaspora community and like having Caribbean friends and 
Um, I'm just going to say Caribbean. Sorry. <laughs> you know, just think of Black Diaspora, period. I'm thinking of something very, like, let me not be too specific. But I'm thinking of very specific instances in my life where you're just all like, wow. You just wonder about the trauma. <laughs> like, and you wonder why, why, would, why would dads do this? Like, yeah. It's a real thing, and it does make you think. And that, that's why I was all like, hmm. She does give Cyril some grace. They really do. But I love how they kind of go into the psyche of these half-siblings and the trauma that they experience because of that. Because a lot of the times in those family dynamics, we don't really talk about it. We really don't talk about the trauma that those family dynamics um, create. Because I, don't, I can't say... Mm, so, so much for Caribbean households but like I guess in African households there is this idea of like community and uncles and aunts that even aunt, uncles and aunts or like a sister that's not really like a sister and you know yeah that community but also we don't really discuss like the messiness of it like <laughs> and I guess that, that can be the same for like black Americans or this like the black diaspora period that's the only thing I can speak for because that's the only like reference from of life that I have but we really don't talk about what that does to you when like you have the the fleeting dad who like shows up once in a blue moon and has these kids and doesn't really like discuss what that type of dynamic is doing to you mentally um but then like kind of just shows up with these kids or like shows up with these relationships and doesn't really do the mental processing work with you so yeah yeah it, it it was I I appreciated the the care in terms of like how she doubled into each sibling and like just them like bonding like I really appreciated that I really did so yes again I'm giving it a three I think the three is mainly because of that um and um maybe a book for Danny Danny was my favorite maybe a book for Prince you know like a little you know I don't know a little romance of Prince falling in love with Jenna or something like that anyway that is my review for people person let me know if you read it and you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next review.